Francesco de Gregori Omri is an Italian singer-songwriter. He is popularly known as Il Principe di Cantori, a nickname referring to the elegance of his lyrics. He has also been described by Bob Dylan as folk Italian hero. He is often referred as singer-songwriter and poet, although he prefers to be identified simply as artist. De Gregori was born in Rome to a middle-class family, to Giorgio and Rita Greci, and he and spent some of his youth in Pescara, before returning to the capital. His elder brother, Luigi, was a musician, and had a personal career with the name of Luigi Greci, chosen later in order to avoid confusion with the more famous Francesco. Influenced by Bob Dylan, Leonard Cohen and the Italian singer-songwriter Fabrizio Drandiare told the copyright, de Gregori started to perform his songs at the Folk Studio, in Rome, which was already frequented by his brother. On one occasion Drandiare told the copyright himself is said to have listened to de Gregori's work and appreciated it. Later de Gregori, formed a band with his friends Antonello Venditti, Mimo Lokashli and Giorgio Locasio, who all had success as singer-songwriters in the following years. De Gregori made his debut as a professional singer in 1972 with the Aureus Campus, in collaboration with Venditti. The LP included the early masterpiece Signora Aquilin, but Venditti had more songs, and, having a better voice, earned better consideration by the label. The duo subsequently broke up. De Gregori's next album, Alice Non Losa, was a commercial failure. However, the title track, The Mysterious Alice, scored some success in several popular music shows, and is still included amongst his best works today. The 1974 album Francisco de Gregori showed even more experimental, and sometimes obscure lyrics, and again was a failure. RCA Music, however, continued to trust in de Gregori's qualities. This trust was repaid the following year, when de Gregori released one of the most successful Italian LPs of the 1970s, Rimo. This work contained several of his most famous songs. This time de Gregori's talent for unusual and poetic lyrics intermingled in a more mature way with the music. Lucio Dalla provided musical ideas for Pablo the unusual story of a Spanish immigrant in Switzerland. Jazzy themes were present in songs like Quattro Carni and La Storia di Ieri. The latter, a song about the years of fascism, had been already released on Dere Ndiare till the copyright S 1974 album Volume 8, as it had been written during a stay in the Genese singer's Sardinian estate. Buffalo Bill confirmed de Gregori's qualities, and contained at least two classics, the eponymous song and Santa Lucia, the singer's own favorite. However, during a concert held in Milan in 1977, de Gregori, who had always declared his inclination to left-wing ideas and ideals, was fiercely contested by a group of extreme left agitators. In a mock trial, they accused him of using a left-wing message, solely to sell records and insisted that music should be free. De Gregori was at risk of injury in the fray, and decided to quit his musical career. During the following two years he therefore worked as a bookstore and music shop clerk. The episode, known as the Pallado Incident, influenced several works by other Italian singer-songwriters, such as Roberto Vecchioni's Vaudeville. The Pallado Incident was one of a number of such incidents. At this time, De Gregori married Alessandra Gobbi whom he had known since high school comma and they had two sons, Marco, and Federico. In 1978, however, he returned with another inspired album, De Gregori, containing one of his most famous songs, Generale. He declared that he felt this song much too important for him to continue staying away from the music world. The following year he joined his old friend Lucio Dalla with a highly successful live tour, entitled Banana Republic, and published a studio LP, Viva Italia, featuring American musicians. The title track was later adopted as the Italian Socialist Party song, but de Gregori always opposed this choice.